Amen and amen. The Lord is good. And all the time, the Lord is good and his mercies endures forward. Bible says that his mercies are new every morning. Amen. Thank God for fresh mercy. Yesterday mercy cannot hold me today. Today I need fresh mercy from heaven. Amen. And amen. So I'm going to continue with our new series on raising the standard of the word of God. Raising the standard of the word of God. And this year, we are raising the standard. Amen? No more average, no more lukewarm, no more apathy, no more complacency. We are raising the standard. We are going up. I think there's a song that says that we are going up to, is that the one? Well, we are going up. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are raising the standard in every area of our lives. Amen? We are dealing with the enemy called average. I refuse to be an average Christian. Amen? I chose to be an extraordinary person. Oh, only, only one person agree with me. Oh, Lord have mercy. Ah. <laughs> amen and amen. So if you have your Bible... Please, let's turn to our foundation scripture. Matthew chapter 4. And Brother Ido gave us a very good sermon last week. Let's give him a very God bless you. Brother Ido, the Lord bless you. <laughs> Please pray for me. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. Lord, help me. <laughs> amen. And amen. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through to 4. Let's stand as we read. The word of God. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Who led him? The Spirit led him to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, Command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. It is written, Man shall not live. Oh, Ralph, you can have a seat. You can have a seat. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone. If the Bible is yours, please underline the word alone. Man shall not live by bread alone. But there is a contradiction. Man shall not live or be sustained by bread alone. But there is a contradiction. But by what? But by every word. Somebody say every. Everywhere that proceeds or comes out from the mouth of God. And ladies and gentlemen, the words that comes out of the mouth of God is enshrined in the scriptures. Amen. Somebody? The words that proceeds from the mouth of God, it is enshrined in the canon of scriptures. And so this morning, we will join with the German theologian, uh, that is uh, Martin Luther, who coined the phrase in 1571 when he said, sola scriptura. That means sol, uh, uh, scripture alone. Say with me, sola scriptura. Scripture alone. Say it again, sola scriptura. Scripture alone. Sola means alone or only. Okay? Now, folks, living by the standard of the word of God, ought to be the life priority of every believer, of every child of God, of every follower in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the word of God is the manufacturer's manual. The manufacturer being God. 
The word of God is the manufacturer's manual, the blueprint by which we order our lives, by which we order our affairs, by which we order our actions and our conducts. Amen, somebody. The word of God has been given to us to prepare us for a better life here on earth and the life afterwards in eternity. Somebody say, I hear you. Hence, the acronym B-I-B-L-E means basic instruction before leaving earth. Scripture, scripture alone. In the passage that we've just read earlier, the apostle Matthew makes us to understand that the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. But watch this. The Spirit who brought Jesus into the world, the Spirit who demonstrated God's approval on him, the same Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Not all the problems that you go through is the devil. Some of them are engineered by God. Amen, somebody? I said some of them are engineered by God to take you to where you ought to be in life. Amen, somebody? Watch this. The word tempted in the Greek language is the word perazo. Somebody said perazo. Perazo means to test objectively to scrutinize, to entice, to examine, and to prove. Tempted. Tempted. To test objectively, to scrutinize, to entice, to examine, and to prove. But watch this. The substance of the test has to do with Jesus' devotion and obedience to his father. The substance of the test has to do with Jesus' devotion and obedience to his father. God's objective to the test was to demonstrate the character of his son to prove his obedience, his faithfulness, his loyalty, independence on him in preparation for his mission and purpose here on earth. That is God's objective to the text. The intent of Satan to the text was to entice Jesus to break faith or to break rank with his father and thus disavow his divine sonship. Amen? So we have the substance of the text, God's objective to the text, Satan's intention of the text, all three different things. Amen? And so he attacked Jesus when he was vulnerable and weak physically, after having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Watch something. Our Lord Jesus Christ experienced three temptations. Come on to man. Come on to one. And you and I will go through exactly the same temptation that Jesus had. But for this morning, I'll be measuring on only one of the temptations. So the Bible says that the tempter, the devil came to him and he says to him, if you are the son of God, command these stones to become bread after fasting for 40 days. But watch this. The temptation was not to doubt Jesus' sonship. Are you following me? The temptation was not to doubt that Jesus was the son of God. He knew who Jesus was. He heard when God spoke out of the heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He heard it. So the temptation was not about doubting Jesus' sonship. What is it about then? It was to suggest that as the son of God, Jesus surely had the power and the right to satisfy his own needs independent of the Father. That was what it's all about. Can I say that again? It was, about, it was to suggest that as the Son of God, Jesus had the right and the power to satisfy his own needs independent of the Father. 
In other words, he was urging Jesus to use his sonship, his position, in a way that is inconsistent to the will and the ways of his father for his life. Can I hear amen? Remember that he was vulnerable, weak, physically, hungry. And when you are hungry, what do you do? You need to satisfy the condition of your hunger. Is that true? Oh, yes. And today, we have people who do anything, I mean anything, to satisfy the condition of their hunger. There are those who are hungry for power, hungry for relevance, hungry for fame, hungry for money, hungry to impress people. And they will do anything including selling their soul to the devil in order for them to satisfy the condition of their hunger. Say, I hear you. Oh, yes. Amen. And so, they will destroy their integrity. They will destroy their credibility in order to satisfy the condition of their hunger. Amen. Some would even abandon their values in life. But watch something. Jesus' response to Satan's subjection reflected his total commitment to follow God's will as revealed in the scriptures no matter what. Can I say that again? Jesus' response to Satan's suggestion reflected his total commitment to follow God's will as, re watch this, as revealed in the scriptures no matter what. And so he turned to him and quoted from the scriptures. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 3 to be precise. He says to him, but he answered and said, it is written. It is what? It is what? He did not quote his own opinion. It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of? Oh, help me out here. Out of the mouth of? Church, the application of this text was originally to the nation of Israel. But Jesus applied, it, applied this text to everyone, in particular to himself. Amen? He used the spiritual resources that are available to all people, including himself, namely the word of God. Sola scripture. Scripture alone. So he says to him, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God, recorded where? Where is it recorded? Where is it recorded? In the canon of scripture. Amen. That means that the word of God must be essential to the life of the believer or to the follower of Christ if we are to live the life that God wants us to live as it was in the life of Jesus. Amen. So he says that man shall not live by bread alone. Now, the word man here in the Greek is the word anthropos. Say anthropos. From which comes the word anthropology, which means the science or the study of human beings. Anthropology. But anthropos means human. So that means that the word in the text does not refer to gender but it refers to a race called the human race. Amen? And amen. So Jesus says that man shall not, or humans, humans, male and female, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now watch this. The human makeup consists of a tri tripartite. Say tripartite. It means that we are a division of three. We are spirit beings. We have a soul, which have to deal with our intellect, our will, and our emotions. And then we have a physical being. So we are spiritual beings. We are psychological beings, the soul. 
And then we are physiological beings. Say it with me. Spiritual beings, psychological beings, and physical beings. Watch something. All three of us must be fed and fed well if they are to grow and to become strong. Are you following me? All three of my being, my physiological side, my psychological side, and my spiritual side must be fed. Otherwise, one will grow strong and the others will be weak. I Amen, somebody. There must be a holistic taking care of ourselves. That means that my body has to be fed, my soul has to be fed well, and my spirit being. That's why Jesus says, don't live by bread alone. And I'm coming to that in a minute. Amen. No, watch, watch something. We feed our bodies with bread or food. Is that true? Now, the Webster's Dictionary defines food as any substance or material, material metabolized by animal or plant consisting essentially of protein, carbohydrate, and fat used in the body as, as an organism to give energy strength to grow and to repair the body. Food. Amen? Food. 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 Somebody say food. So that means that all your rice and peas, your pound of yam, your shepherd pies, your Yorkshire puddings, your jollof rice, your apple pies, your hamburgers, your pita breads, your apple pies, all metabolizes to nourish you, to give you strength, to grow you, your, phys your body physically, and to sustain you and to repair your body. That's what food does. Is that true? No, I'm not a doctor. I just learned it from somebody else. Amen. And Jesus said that man shall not live by what? By what? By bread, physical bread alone, man shall not live by rice and peas alone. Man shall not live by jollof rice alone, the Africans. Man shall not live by Yorkshire puddings alone. But why? Because those things take care of the one third of you, your physical side. But Jesus said that if your soul has to be strong, if your spirit has to be strong, you got to feed your spirit and feed your soul to be as strong as your physical body is. Otherwise, there will be deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Amen. Watch this. Man shall not live by bread alone, food, apple pie, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The other two of you have to be fed. And they are fed by the very words of Jehovah. Amen. And so in saying this, Jesus made a clear distinction between food that sustains you physically, that grows you physically, that nourishes you physically, that, that repairs your body tissue physically, and food that ought to to sustain and nourish your soul and your spirits. A clear distinction. Amen, somebody. And that is the word of God. Because our conscience, which is our psychological part, have to be cultured by the word of God. Our emotions have to be trained by the word of God. Otherwise, they go crazy. Amen, somebody. And our spirit have to be fed, and they are fed by the very words of God. And so just as fruits and vegetables and Chinese food and Indian curry and fish and chips and jack chicken and chandelier rose nourishes and sustains and energizes your physical body, in the same way, the word of God, the teachings of Christ, the principles of Christ, the doctrines of Christ must be a food that nourishes your soul, 
that sustains your spirit, that grow your spirit, that, oh Lord, have mercy, that energizes you spiritually. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. And so, church, just as we eat every day to sustain and to build us physically, in the same way, we must eat the word of God every day to build and sustain our souls and our spirits. But here lies the problem. Somebody say, here lies the problem. <laughs> say it again. Somebody once said that we eat three to four big hot meals a day. And in between that, we have snacks and confectionery, chocolate, yummy. But we feed our spirit and our soul one cold meal a week. Cold a week. We feed our physical body three or four meals a day. A day. In between, there is apple pie, there is mass bars or sneakers, all sorts of things. But we feed our spirit and our soul one cold snack a week. Amen? And when you do that, though you might be strong spiritually, your emotions are weak. Any little thing just irritates you. Your spirit is weak. The devil comes and says, and then you are down. Because the spirit is weak and the soul has not been educated. Listen, my emotions have to have intelligence. And the emotion can have intelligence by the word of God. Amen. Listen, sometimes somebody annoys me and I'm tempted to send them to heaven quickly. That is my emotion talking. But if the emotions are trained by the word of God, I ignore the emotions, do what God says, and very soon the emotion catches up. Amen, somebody? Somebody said this, that the Bible is meant to be bread for daily use and not a cake for special occasions. Not a cake for special occasions, okay, for daily use. If you are to grow strong in your souls, if you are to grow strong in your spirit, the word of God, I mean, come on, Jesus said that, Man shall not live by bread alone. Bread is good. It sustains me physically, but emotionally, if I don't eat on the word of God, I'm going to be weak. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that does what? Proceedeth from folks. Jesus, who is our role model, the word of God was food to him when he was here on earth. What sustained him above everything else was his commitment to do the will of the Father enshrined in the scriptures. In other words, he submitted to the authority of the scriptures. Amen? Because many a times he references to the authoritative writings of the scriptures. So he will say, it is written. Have you not heard? Have you not read? What do you think he's referring to? To the written word of God. The Logos. And so to Jesus, he lived by sola scriptura. Scripture alone. And the child of God or the follower of Jesus Christ must also subscribe to sola scriptura, scripture alone. If you are to live the life that God wants you to live here on earth, you get to live your life based on the word of God, not based on human opinion, but on the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? So why are we not studying the Bible? Why don't we read our Bible? If we are to live by that, why don't we make the Bible the number one in our lives? Why? Rough. Why? Watch this. Scripture alone. John 6, 63 says that the words that I speak to you, says Jesus, they are spirit and they are 
life. John 1 verse 1 says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was the word itself. It is a spirit and it is God himself. So when you are reading, when you are reading the word, you are taking in the spirit. Amen. <laughs> scripture alone. Say with me. Scripture alone. Scripture alone. What does that mean? It means placing the word of God at the center stage of your life and practices. Scripture alone means allowing the word of God to script your life or your everyday living. Scripture alone. Scripture alone means that allow the scriptures through the Holy Spirit to govern your life and to solve all your controversies. Somebody say, Scripture alone. Say it again. Scripture alone means that the word of God must be the supreme and final authority in all your decisions and choices in matters relating to life and godliness. Scripture alone. Say with me, Scripture alone. Scripture alone means that all of our choices and decisions must be regulated by the scriptures. Scripture alone. Scripture alone means that the scripture must order my steps. It must guide my ways and direct my path. Scripture alone means that the scripture alone must be my blueprint for living. Scripture alone. So why are we not studying it? Mm-hmm. Oh, let me let that sink in for a minute. Hallelujah. Now listen. For God to reign in our lives supremely, we must allow him to set the agenda through the written word and allowing the word of God to be the final arbitration in our choices and decision making. Allowing the word of God to be the final arbitration in our choices and decision making. Scripture alone. Amen. The biblical scholar and author, the late John Stott, says this. He says, we must allow the word of God to confront us. Allow the word of God to disturb your security. Allow the word of God to undermine your complacency. Allow the word of God to overthrow your pattern of thought and behavior that are inconsistent with the ways and the will of God. Allow God's word to overthrow it. Scripture alone. Scripture alone. Amen. D.L. Moody said that the word of God were not given just for our information, but they were given for our transformation. Amen. For our transformation. Somebody says scripture alone. That means that the word of God is a light that guides you, a counselor that counsels you, a comforter to comfort you, a staff to support you, a sword to defend you, and a physician to cure you. Somebody said, scripture alone. <laughs> In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says that he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from all their distractions. Proverbs 4, 20 and 22 says this, that my son, attend to my words, incline your ear to my saying, do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Why? Because they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The word of God. Hallelujah. Scripture alone. Scripture alone. Scripture alone. Paul tells his son, Timothy, 2 Timothy 3.15, he says that from childhood, you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is, which is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, profitable for instruction, profitable for uh, reproof and correction, profitable in righteousness, that the man and the woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped. The scriptures. If the scriptures can change your life, why are we, why are we not loving it? Mm, why are we not studying it? That's what Jesus said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. He says sometimes God has given us his instructions, 
but we want deliverance from somewhere else. Why we are ignoring what you have told us to do in order for us to, to experience our breakthrough. We will do everything else apart from what we've been told in scripture. Not in this church. <laughs> amen, somebody. I said amen. amen. Therefore, the root of stability in the believer's life comes from being grounded in the word of God. Being, there's no other way. You can pray, hey, if you don't know the word, you'll be, your emotions will be just everywhere. How many of you have seen people? <laughs> let, me, let me digress. <laughs> okay, I'll carry on. <laughs> if the word is not there, if the word is not there, you become as weak as any. I don't care how much you pray. I don't care your shanda and your hallelujahs. I don't care how long you fast. If the word of God is not there, you'll be as weak as anybody else. The word of God. The author Henry Beach has said that the Bible is a chart for you to stay by, to keep you from the bottom of the sea, to show you where the harbor is, and to reach it without running onto the rock like the Titanic. The word of God brings direction to us. Amen. If you don't, if you want to know how to have to, if you want to know how to have a good marriage, what do you look into? The word of God. If you want to prosper, what do you have to look into? If you want to get on with people, where do we get our information? I rest my case. The word of God. The word of God is like a compass. Like a compass, the Bible always points you in the right direction. The way that God wants you to go. So that means that we must raise the standard of the word of God. How? By reading it, meditating upon it, studying it, and doing it. Let me say that again. We must raise the standard of the word of God. How? By reading it, meditating upon it, studying it, and practicing it. Because you will not see transformation or change unless it is practice. Unless it is practice applied. Amen? Romans 12 and verse 2 says that, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing or the renovating of the mind. By what? By the word of God. So that you prove, you know what is good, acceptable, and perfect. You know. When the mind is renewed by the word of God, you will know that certain things I ought not to be doing because the word has rather renew my mind. Amen. Oh, Lord, have mercy on us. So that means that we must allow the word of God to script our lives by raising the standard of the word of God in our lives. Did you know that the word of God is the standard of truth? The ultimate definition of what is true and what is not true. Because the word of God re reflects God's truthful character. It comes from his nature. So we must, and I say it again, raise the standard of God above the traditions of men. Raise it above political correctness. Raise it about cultural norms and above your feelings and your emotions. Amen. Let me have a go with the Ghanaians for a minute. The Ghanaians. Somebody say the Ghanaians. Oh, the guns, rather. The guns. The guns. Paul says that uh, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jews first, and then to the Ghanaians. <laughs> Please, Ghanaians, don't take offense. If you want to kill me, just come and kill me after I finish. Okay? But I'm going to say it anyway. There is a tradition in the Ghanaian funeral thing that really annoys me. Oh, bring it on. I'm bringing it on. <laughs> I mean, somebody dies. You go and see them. You shake their hands. You give them a hug. Everything is fine, and we are all fine. 
Then comes the day of the wakeping. And the widow will see that they say, I'm not shaking hands. What kind of a rubbish is this? I mean, who did this to us? Who did this to us? I mean, I've been shaking your hands. Hey! Now the day of the funeral is uh, it's our tradition. From where? Where? Show me which. <laughs> I'm just announcing to you all Ghanaians. If you are going to keep doing that, I will not attend your funerals. I'm just, I'm just warning you. I'm just because I don't see that in the Bible. It's not written anywhere in scripture. Where do you get it from? I mean, where? Do they even know the history behind it? You are just following it without the history. I mean, what kind of a nonsense is this? I mean, nonsense. Who did this to us? Who did this to us? Amen. I mean, come on. I go to the funeral. I'm very happy. Let me say that. And then they say, we don't shake hands. I mean, says who? I mean, are you for real? I mean, seriously. So like I'm, I'm just warning you all the Ghanaians. If you are going to keep doing that, I will not attend your funerals. Um, just in case I start doing that, you don't blame me. Me, I've warned you. <laughs> and so folks, just as We face everything that the devil who threw at us. We got to raise the standard of the word of God. And like Jesus, we can say, every time the devil shows up, it is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus tells us in John 8, 30, 31 and 32, he has preached a message and the people have gotten saved. He turns to them and says, look, if you continue in my word, then and only then, you are my disciples. Until then, you are just a convert. But if you want to become a disciple, you got to continue and follow. So he says that if you continue in my word, then you shall be my disciples indeed. And then, as a disciple, you will know the truth. And the truth that you discover from the written word of God who set you free. You will know the truth about marriage. It will set you free to enjoy your life. You know the truth about prosperity. It will set you free to enjoy it. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. To live the life that God desires for you. Amen. So the question is this. Why do we need to raise the standard of the word of God? Why? Answer. Because the word of God produces faith. Which is necessary in pleasing God. Romans 10, 17 says that, so then faith comes by hearing. And hearing, watch this, it comes not having heard. It comes by hearing. Present continues to those who studied grammar in English, in, in school. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. i got to keep hearing and keep hearing and keep hearing in building my faith so I can please God and believe God for anything even to become the CEO of Virgin Atlantic. Number two, the word of God is given to help us to grow and progress. First Peter 2 and verse 2 says that like newborn babies, desire the sincere milk of the word so that you may grow thereby. How are you going to grow if you're not eating the word of God? How? I mean, you tell me, how? I mean, how? You know, we have the idea that the father that I say yes to Jesus, then boom, I grow. That's what some Christians think. But here, here on planet Earth, we don't grow like that. How many of you have seen your children? They were born and you just leave them alone. No milk, no food. Did they grow? Did they grow? What makes them think that we can translate that into spirituality? You got to be a student of the word of God for you to grow spiritually and mentally. Amen? Number three. Number four, three. The word of God brings direction to us. Psalm 119 verse 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Verse four. Number four. The word of God judges our thoughts and our motives and attitudes and the intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and joint and marrow and is a descender of the thoughts and the intent of the what? The heart. Number five, the word of God prevents me from sinning. 
Amen? Psalm 119 verse 11. Your word have I hidden in where? In my heart. That I may not sin against you. Put the word in there. 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 Hallelujah. Number six. The word of God gives stability to our lives. Matthew 7, 24 and 27. Jesus talks about two people who are building their life. One built on the sand and the other on the rock, which is the word of God. When the rain came, guess which one fell? The one that stood was the one who built on the rock, which is the word of God. Amen? Number seven, the word of God gives comfort and reassurance us in time of sorrow and distress. Number eight, the word of God gives us rest and peace in our heart. Number nine, the word of God gives us hope and the assurance of God's presence and assistance. Somebody said, solar scripture. Now, having said all this, having said all this, this is what God told Joshua. He says, this book of the law shall not depart from where? Your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then you make your ways prosperous and then you have good success. I rest my case. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 1 verse 1 to 3 that blessed is the man, blessed is the woman who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, her delight, is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. That person, that geezer, shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, which bring forth fruits productive in his season. And whatever he does shall prosper. And so, folks, change comes gradually. Change comes gradually. As we continue to read the Bible, to meditate on the Bible, to, to study the Bible, and to act upon it, that's where change comes. So Paul tells us that let the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly, Colossians 3 and verse 16. In other words, let the word of God fill your minds. Let the word of God rule your heart. And let the word of God guide your tongues. Amen? So in conclusion, you'll be very happy. <laughs> we need more than bread to live. We need to feed on the very words of God. Amen? But church, the value of the word of God is not just knowing it, but obeying in doing it. Because knowledge is only valuable if it improves my ability to make good choices and good decisions in transforming my lives. It's only valuable. Knowledge is only valuable. Amen? if it improves my ability to make good choices and good decisions in transforming my lives. Amen? So don't just read and study it. Act upon it, and you will see transformation. The word changes us. It will make your soul strong and your spirit like a giant. Amen? Sola Scripture. Scripture. Alone, stand to your feet. Thank you.